Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming Hello. Um, and making time to talk about some of the stuff that we need to talk about. Um, so hopefully everybody had a chance to look at the agenda and some of the um, items in our folder. But if not, that's OK, too. Ruth, are you, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hold on. Okay. Not on video yet. I just wanted to make sure you were ready to start. Um, so I thought we would start with some updates. Um, and I know I think at least four of us here have had the opportunity to sit in on some of Aussie's engagement. So I thought we could share any thoughts, insights, questions about that. Um, Darren, I know that you had the opportunity, and maybe you too, Jessica, I don't know, to attend one of the um, organization engagements. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, you too, Jampa. So I was really curious about that because my, my uh, what I've heard from everybody else is that the council level ones have not been well attended or attended. At all. So less to say about, I mean, that we can talk about that. Um, and Jessica and I actually had a, a brief conversation about how to address that. But I would love to hear um, your takeaways from the, um, or how many people were there, who was there, how did it go? Yeah, I think, in, in, I mean, I think that's, that's true. And, and um, in my conversations and, and actually, in the meeting that I went to today at the Ward Education Councils, uh, so Kathy Riley was there and Robert Henderson from the Ward 5 uh, Equity uh, Committee was there, um, and that was it. Um, mm -hmm. But Donna noted from the beginning that, you know, the, the Ward Education Council meetings have been definitely much more poorly attended than the rest of the meetings, including the ones with the parent groups and individually requested meetings and the meetings with their LEAs group um, have been uh, really well attended. So that's, it's, I mean, it's too bad that we're not getting more attendees, I think, at the ward education uh, groups, but maybe there's a way that we can um, reach out at least again with some more information about, about how to participate in the process once um, the uh, draft amendment plan comes up. Um, maybe that's an opportunity for the Ward Education Councils to to join again. I mean, I, I feel like there's also if the parent groups are being you know more well attended, then at least we're hitting some of the same people that would be in those uh, the Ward Education Council groups too. Certainly not all of them by any stretch, um, but some. Are the parent groups parent organization folks, or are they actually parents? I believe there's both, but I'm not entirely. I don't have their list because I didn't invite them, but um, but I think it's a little bit of both. So are, are we, be, we being SBOE members and staff attending those as well, or only the board ones? We're the attending council. the ones that, that they send us the list of, of, of groups for. So um, it's the, I don't remember the specifics to be honest with you, but it's the groups of folks that we sent as well as the Ward Education Councils and, and um, and that yeah um i'm seeing ruth uh, chatting so one thing um, yeah yeah so they, I, yeah go ahead i mean i just i'm actually curious to hear if there's any takeaways from the better attended ones but i see your hand kylene is this related or should we wait it's related um and this is probably hindsight but we probably should have had aussie come to war at councils versus sending people the other way um, they still can they they say that they would do that it's in their email okay. so if if you're if you yeah, have we're always time looking time. for topics and i just didn't even think because i was we were planning for april actually our meeting is tonight um yeah. or after the six so i can pitch that for the ward eight at council um i didn't even think about we should have did the reverse um yeah, that was in um, Aussie's original email to the Ward Education Council is that if you know these times didn't work, just let us know when your meeting is and that, that they would happy to be there. And to, to Ruth's point in the chat, which is I, I feel like related, um, you know, how they were promoted. I mean, the, the emails went directly from Aussie to the contact information that that um, 
we had to the leaders of the ward education group. So um, it's probably I'm my name sure. recognition. Sometimes certain folks send in certain things. They're like, who? Um, but I can, I know I didn't alert my ward at the council to look out for Donna's email. Yeah. A lot of other moving pieces were going on, but we have a six o'clock. So I can, I think it'd be a good, we're always looking for topics for people to engage on. Um, so yeah, that'd be great. I you know, and I, I'm sure Donna, sorry, go ahead, Emily. I was just going to say that's a good point. And also, I think so. I got some feedback from my ed councils. I have two, well, once a, a group. And I think it does help if we mention that this is a continuation of what we've been talking to them about, if you have been talking to them about it, because there was some confusion around that. They were just like, what is this different? Or is this like, why are they asking? Is it going to be against what you're doing? Or is it so it was helpful to clarify that actually. Um, so that I actually that's something we should put in our update when we send out this month's update. And we can even like maybe pair up too, because I think I know for Ward 8, we're planning to do an in-person May social kind of wrap up the year to take a break during the summer. But um, I know work by, like, I mean, it's, it's, we can probably like even just team up and do something and just get everybody in one spot. Yeah. yeah Sorry, what, what were you going to say, John Paul? I don't remember. Something about it being great, yeah. Yeah, no, I think I think you're right. I mean, yeah, during the the meeting today, um, I think Kathy specifically um, did mention that there was some confusion on sort of what the process was after the state board approved its recommendations. Like, was Alci starting again? Were they using our recommendations? Like, how were they moving forward? Which is part of the pres presentation that Donna was making, but it would have helped, I think, to have that in part of the email so that it was clear from the beginning that this is part of that process. Um, and to Ruth's point too, I mean, I, I think there were multiple emails that went out to these groups, but but even so, like you're saying, one email from someone who they may not know the name isn't necessarily the same type of, of thing that we were that we were going for. Um, although, you know, the reminders that that members sent um, as well um, to. Uh, that members sent to to their assume ward education groups and, and to their listeners about the um, the meetings would it be another way. Um, uh, so I just realized too. So um, so Josh has said in the chat that the panelists aren't um, listed for him. So so just um, for his benefit, um, the members that are present are Dr. Reed, Dr. Kasoy, Dr. Sutter, and uh, Representative Wattenberg. Right. And the only reason you can't see them is because they don't have their cameras on right now. There's no, nobody's hiding. Um, so, okay. And just quickly, because I, I am being mindful of time, any share outs, insights from any of the well attended meetings? Do, first of all, actually, one thing I'm curious about um, is, is it a different presentation or exactly the same or so from my understanding, Donna has been updating the presentation based on the feedback that they're getting. Um, and so I think that's been helpful. Um, Darren, can you make me host and I can I can put it on here so that um, the folks who aren't on video, at least it pops up their name for the for for Josh and the other attendees to see. Um, so so yeah, I mean, I think there has been updates to the presentation um, throughout the process based on the feedback that, that Donna's been getting. So I think that's I think it's a really positive thing. Great. Um, so that's one, I guess, one more thing. And, and um, Representative Sutter and I talked about this a little bit is um, I did share the feedback that I got from my ward council chairs um, with Donna and her team. And I see, actually, I went and looked at the um, slides that she did with the student council. I didn't get a chance to attend that meeting, um, but I can see some of the feedback in there. So I do think that that is worthwhile too, is just if we could gather our feedback that if we are getting some from folks um, that we can then maybe have uh, President Sutter pass that along. So I, I, was, I was very pleased to see that responsiveness. And I do think it was a, um, a more accessible presentation than the one I attended mm -hmm. so 
Yeah. Um, okay. And just heads up, there are two more scheduled public engagements with um, one with parents and one with uh, Ed Council are just open next week on the 25th from six to seven and on the 27th from 5.30 to 6.30. And if anybody from our committee could attend, that would be great. I think I can do the Monday one on the 25th. Um, and then there's another one. I don't know if everyone knows this, um, but Donna informed me that they are planning to schedule a Spanish speaking session um, probably in early May. So if, I mean, that would be a good thing for us to, um, you know, broadcast as well to your folks, to your constituents. Um, okay, anything else on that note about the engagement? Okay. Um, just a quick, uh, sorry, just a quick readout on the meeting um, with Dr. Grant, uh, Jacques and I, or Representative Patterson and I met briefly. We had 15 minutes um, with Dr. Grant and the question that Dr. Pa I mean, uh, he is Dr. Patterson now, um, asked was about, you know, how do we reconcile differences once they bring us the proposal? Um, where will they, you know, what is the process for that? And Dr. Grant said that, you know, it would take place in those meetings. Like that's when we can provide feedback. So um, President Sutter and I had a conversation and one of the things that we discussed was the possibility of creating of, you know, just changing the format for the June meeting, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, President Sutter. Um, so that it's more conducive to having a, a conversation um, and really talking through some of the things that come up. Is that right? Yeah, that sounds right. And just to clarify what I mean by that, um, Representative Gasoy was saying that uh, she had some concerns that if we were going to have the feedback from members to Aussie about the proposal in the meeting, that the each member getting three minutes to speak format doesn't necessarily lend itself to the sort of rich discussion we wanted. And I offered up that the conversation we had around our own budget at the last working session took a different format that seemed to offer up some space for conversation. So maybe we could uh, iterate on that, whether it's that same format or something else that does permit for sort of a robust discussion. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. So, and I don't remember if they are presenting in July as well, um, but I think just during you know that period leading up to our vote, we may want to consider that. But I think starting in June, that's a, a great um, way to address that. Um, any questions or thoughts about that? I, that would be a better format for sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so just one, Oh, I also right, and that and I assume that will be with the on the whole discussion about this issue with the superintendent. What not do you mean? Start, well, not just the feedback on the sessions, but as we have the conversation with her about uh, this issue. I'm not uh, sure I understand the question. So I believe that we're getting a um, a report from the superintendent about the prog you know what they're doing in this area and then there'll be a discussion part of which will be our response on the engagement and i just want to make sure that the the new format would apply to the full discussion or do you mean it just for discussing the engagement or is there not or is she not reporting on the full range of issues on this i think so in the the reason why we're doing it for june is because that's when Aussie will have a um, proposal, like a proposed or a draft of the proposal, sorry. And so that's what we'll be discussing. Um, and so I think given the time, even if we have a different format, you know, we would not probably have time to discuss more than the proposal. But, but in discussing the proposal, I assume we would 
touch on issues that you know are relevant. I'm so, I'm sorry. I totally misunderstood something. I thought what we were saying was that the May meeting, no, with the super. So where are we having the discussion about yeah. the engagements? About engagements? Oh, okay. We moved on. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I'm completely okay. lost. I'll, I'll talk to somebody later. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, no, I was talking about my meeting with uh, Representative Patterson um, at the ASI leadership meeting. And so we brought up the question of how will we reconcile differences? And so it will be at our uh, working sessions when they present, right? And so that's where we'll have a different format. So it's not just three minutes each and we can't have a real conversation. Um, I will just say also, we're gonna have time hopefully to discuss um, the research memo, but I did raise that at the meeting and just more as an offering, but I guess I surprised Dr. Grant. So it, it was not, <laughs> she wasn't excited about it. <laughs> like I hoped she would be. Um, so, I think we're we're shifting a little in terms of where we're aiming it. At first, we were thinking this was directly for ASI to use as a resource. Now it's more, it's a resource for members really. So we're kind of, we all have the same information and we're basing our questions at the, um, you know, the working sessions with ASI on similar research. Um, but we are also hoping that this will create some continuity in terms of our conversations with ASI as well, in terms of what they're, they understand we are drawing on and also that they will see this is like, our recommendations are based on this research. So that is sort of the idea. And so we'll make it public and available to ASI as they see fit to use it, if that makes sense. Um, so that's kind of where we landed with that. Um, I am ready to move to the next item unless anyone else had any questions or thoughts on any of this. Okay, cool. Um, so let's move to the research chart and memo. Um, Darren, put together what I think is a, a pretty comprehensive and both comprehensive and accessible memo um, focused on school climate um, that outlines uh, the purpose and then what research, uh, what's some of the sample, sorry, what research is available in the chart so that's part of it is just like making the chart more accessible and then giving some samples of states and how they use uh, a school climate metric specifically in their, um, in their formula. Um, so that is really helpful. And also um, showing sort of how DC uses a climate metric um, in various ways or some things that have been proposed. So I don't know if folks have had a chance to look at that, if you had thoughts or questions about it, but we are hoping that we can make it public soon. Do we, what is our date on that, Darren? Do you know? Um, I was thinking, I, I know it's out for a uh, review by board members. So I'm thinking- Next week. Um, hopefully by maybe towards the end of April or May, just to help. I think one of the thoughts behind this was if Asi were to review it while they're doing their engagements, um, perhaps just thinking about these as they're, they're working with their feedback groups. Yeah, so if you can review and provide any feedback, that would be really helpful. Um, would it be helpful, Emily, if, if I or, or you or Jacques or somebody sends a reminder email to everybody just saying, hey, if you can do this, you know, take a look at it. I think it would be. I did. Um, so <laughs> I did see one. Um, I sent a text too. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Um, Great. 
I, I can talk. I mean, I have some comments. Um, so is that is that what you want, right, comments? Yep. Okay, so a couple things. First, on the climate, um, I think the memo says, Darren, that there's 12 states that do climate. I think it would be really great to see examples from all 12 states um, so that we just have a sense of, you know, that's, you know, a lot of states, a lot of examples, um, and we should show them. And even if you don't have commentary on all of them, I think just being able to show them. And I, I would just say around that, I could not click, uh, I could not link to the links that were there. So I don't know if that's just me or what. I think it's SharePoint. I've had that problem in SharePoint okay. before. Which, uh, could you give me an example of one of the links? I have it open right now. Or well, I, I can touch oh, oh, all, all the links. So um, usually in SharePoint, you have to hold control or command and then click. Oh, good to know. I did not know that. Yeah, it's a um, Microsoft weirdness. OK, so con control and click. Uh, so yeah, so you're on a you're on a Mac, so it would probably oh okay, be I see. Wow, that's really uh, complicated. There's, there's also if you right click over the link, there's an option to open the link. If you right click it, okay. Well, I don't want to take everybody's time on that. Okay, okay so that now works, so I can now look at those. But okay, I think great. it would be very, very good to have all the all the states there, so that we can see. I think that's an important point. Um. Uh, you, you're also, saying, I'm sorry to interrupt, Riff. You, you mentioned even without the commentary or, or narrative, just maybe a link and like a quick blurb. Uh, at least a link. I mean, if you could do a quick blurb, I mean, I think the important thing is, is it used in accountability or is it on the report card? Um, you know, what they, what, what they, um, what they measure ideally, you know, how they measure it, that they have a certain, um, Ruth, you know, can I interrupt for a sec? Because it, part of the idea of the memo, and maybe we need to make this more clear, is to get folks to use the research chart. And all of those points that you're making are in the research chart, including, like, all of those points are outlined there. But, so, yeah, go on. Well, maybe, I, maybe I'm, um, just an example of what the problem is, but I don't think the research chart has the 12 states. It does, doesn't it? Okay, then, I, then there, I'm not. Yeah, it does. So, okay, so then what I'm looking at is it, it's not, it, it's somehow collapsed. I, I don't really get it then. Okay, then that's, if all the, if all the states are there, then my comment is not uh, relevant. Yeah. Okay. If you click on the tab that says school climate, it's yeah. all the states that use it on column C is description of use and accountability framework. And then columns D and E show um, how they're explained out in the ESSA plans um, and, and on the yeah, it, 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 That's not working for me. I, I'll, I'll yeah. work with someone to get it in a different format, but that, that's not happening. But maybe Darren, it would be good to have like in red font or something, see research chart for full list or something like that. You know, maybe send it out in addition to SharePoint in just a regular document. I mean, it's, I think based on what uh, John Poe was saying, maybe it said it's the SharePoint. So it's not, it, yeah. it's just not working. Okay. Um, and can I add one other thing to that? It, yeah. Maybe this is already there too, is likewise, just a complete list of the states that don't have a summative score and what they do instead. So maybe that's the topic for our next memo. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was one of my questions actually is what should be our next topic. So I think that would be a good one. Um, any other responses to the the document itself because I had a couple of other questions. Yeah, go ahead, President Sutter. Thanks so much. Um, so I really like the memo. I think it's a helpful way to sort of elaborate on the research chart. Um, a couple of these questions I asked you yesterday, uh, Dr. Gasoy. So I apologize for the repetitiveness, but 
One is sort of what's the intention for who uses the memo and how, um, knowing that the superintendent's response to the memo was less than enthusiastic. Um, and I'll just elaborate that, you know, I shared with Dr. Gasoy and with Dr. Patterson that typically when we meet with the superintendent, we provide the list of topics ahead of time and we talk through what's going to be discussed so that we're all on the same page going into the meeting. And neither Vice President Thompson or I knew that this memo was something that was going to be shared. So we didn't mention it. And so at the end of the meeting, it came uh, sort of out of left field for the superintendent. And also Vice President Thompson and I hadn't seen it. So it was just sort of an awkward setup. Um, but I, I wonder, like, in an ideal world, who would use this memo and why? Two, in the current world, what would board members use this memo for, um, ideally? And then three, I can't quite make sense of uh, if it's my memory from yesterday, which is entirely possible, um, or if I heard it wrong. I thought I understood that the memos were meant to elaborate on pieces of the research chart that were parts that Aussie was not committing to. Is that still the case? And if so, why? Like, why are we not, why are we, why are we honing in on just those parts that Aussie has not publicly committed to addressing? So those are my three questions. I'll start with the last one first. So um, not necessarily, but that okay. is one of the possible purposes. So one idea is that this is a way of keeping some of the topics that they are not committing to doing now on the radar. And as we note in the memo, it says, you know, we understand that ASI is not going to do this for the amendment uh, in 2023, but for future, <laughs> because they can submit another amendment. And one of the things I think is really strong in the, in the memo, um, credit to Darren again, is, um, now I'm lost my train of thought, sorry, is, um, sorry, <laughs> I'll get it. So I was saying it's for, to keep it on the radar, uh, 2023. Oh, because it, it also highlights um, parts of the, our research, our, our um, surveys that showed like how many, you know, the percentage of parents who said, you know, they wanted some aspect of, you know, school climate, students, principals, teachers. So I think it's an important thing to keep both the, this is going to your, one of your other questions now, like how would the board use it? I think, again, you know, for those of you who are not, or for board members who are not on the committee, it isn't necessarily front of mind that, you know, why these things are important or that, you know, maybe at one point we all remembered that there was a survey and what it said, but this is a way of, you know, when we do have the discussions with ASI, we all have information that we need to have productive, well-informed conversations with them. Um, was there another question or does that answer them? Oh, how would ASI use it? So I think the, I think I sort of answered that. I mean, I think the idea is, you know, so for this one, school climate, they are not planning to do that for this amendment, but it's to just share with them research that hopefully will be compelling, you know, and they will get feed, if they get similar feedback that we did, which I assume they will, this is something they can use. It's a resource. Um, so that's all. Um, I see your hand, Representative Watmer. Yeah, I mean, I think another usefulness of it is that there are people in the city, I just note uh, Josh Boots's comment that the public eagerly awaits us. There are people in the public who wanna advocate on this. Um, and, you know, as this plays out, I think a number of us would wanna advocate, um, you know, not just with Ossie, but, uh, with the with the council. I mean, I know there are council members who were interested in revisiting the rating at some point if Ossie didn't. So I think all of this is really important to have in writing why we said this it's because it's a long, you know, it appears like it might be a long process and 
We need it. Um, yeah. Do you still have your hand up from before or is that a new hand? And okay, go ahead. It's a new hand. Um, I appreciate both of those. That's super helpful. The one thing I want to make sure I don't lose the thread on is the comment Representative Wattenberg just made about counsel. Um, I just want to call the question on how the how the board might consider that before any members or committee, I wouldn't say members, but before the committee went forward to talk to counsel. I think one concern I have is that we've worked pretty hard as a board for the time I've been on it to tell counsel to keep the things that are in our purview in our purview. Let us let us do it. Don't take action. Let us do it. And I, I just want to make sure we would all have the same sort of framing if we felt like, listen, we tried to do it and it didn't work. So now we want counsel to help us. Like, how would we message that? How would we make it clear that this is different than don't take action on things without talking to us? Why is this different? I just want us to get clear on that if we went to counsel for some reason um, so that we don't set up an awkward situation where counsel says, you asked us to stay out of your business. Now you want us in your business, which is it? Does that make sense? I mean, I would respond to that in two ways if that's directed at me. I mean, um, our business is to get the work done of the people, so to speak. So if it doesn't, if it can't get done through Aussie and we go to another uh, phase of it, um, that's our business. Um, I don't see that it's, um, it is our business to go to the council. The other thing I would just note is throughout this process, um, I'm sure there's going to be advocates, you know, it, it, this is, it's not entirely in our control. So I, I don't know how that will play out, but we should be aware um, of that. I also, oh, sorry, was your hand up, Dr. Reed? It was, and I put it back down, but I mean, I don't think we should pretend that council doesn't know. Yeah. It's already, I know I included it. I talked to, um, am I, um, what is it? Both my oversight testimony and budget and talk to my council members, director of, but even before then, like I know that there was council members who were asking direct questions about STARS. Um, so it's there. It's, I think it's the question to represent Sutter's point is like, how do we manage that and balance it? And then maybe it sounds like there's opportunity for some consistency um, related to, you know, when we, when we want council to get involved, et cetera. Yeah. Because I know we, I don't think we have been super consistent. But then I was thinking, I re the reason I raised my hands because I was like, oh, safe passage. I was like, wait, that's not in our purview, but council picked it up. Whereas this is, um, the attendance issue is. Um, so yeah, that would be good to just kind of set some precedence around how we want to go about those things. But they, they know it. Right. So what I'm hearing from you, Dr. Reed, is I think really helpful in that it, it brings together what, or it, it um, I think it addresses President Sutter's concern and also acknowledges, yeah. So what it, but it, what it says to me is that as a committee, maybe we need to come up with a strategy and share it with the board. Um, so let's put that on our agenda for next steps. Um, I don't think we'll have time to discuss it now, but we can kind of communicate uh, between meetings. But so it, it would be useful if we could to say, you know, maybe have a short conversation about it or present that idea at the next working meeting. Which is really soon. So yeah, let's, let's talk between so that we can come up with something to share. Okay, thanks guys, that was helpful. Um, my other question about the memo, I think we can table for now, but I will just put it out there that I, you know, I'm just wondering if we want to get Malayo involved in making this, you know, doing various things to make parts of it uh, postable <laughs> on social media. I don't know, just making it more accessible and interesting looking. And um, so that's just maybe a thought to consider, you know, as we talk offline and again, next steps. Um, I did notice, Darren, that our next memo is scheduled on the working plan for August. 
And I'm wondering if that was, we should maybe talk about moving that up if you have capacity, but we can talk about that. Um, any thoughts on- Can I, I sorry, can I? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I think I may have been the one to suggest the August date for that because um, in June and July, we're gonna be working on the amendment so I don't know that we will have the capacity to do a, a memo at the same time as working the actual amendment, but um, we can talk about that if, if it's something that, that needs to be prioritized. What do you mean working the amendment? Like going through it, you mean? Going through it and also doing engagement pieces on it, right? That... Oh, this committee will be doing engagement around it? Well, the board will. Right. So, you know, some of that, I mean, Darren would certainly be part of the lead in, in working with Malayo and Caitlin on some of that engagement with the rest of the staff too. But um, my assumption was that that we were gonna be doing quite a bit of engagement once the draft amendment is out. Is that? Let's discuss offline, sure. yeah. What that would entail and how, how much engagement we're planning to do. Because I think when we were planning the doing the work plan, it wasn't clear if we were doing engagement with other groups or if we're doing our own and not, yeah it's not clear to me how much so um and i do ideally i think it would be good to have at least one more memo before then so that it's during this um the amendment push you know so like the topic that ruth brought up i think would be a good one um anyway so other thoughts on, okay, can we move on to the work plan, specifically the research project? This is really pivoting because I would like to talk about some concerns I have about the well-rounded education research. Yeah, okay, good. Um, so as you all know, at the last working session, I suggested that we could actually, as a committee, we could definitely push this off till next fiscal year. I don't know how that fits into the board's, you know, bigger schedule. So that's a question. Um, but I also just wanted to have a discussion about the format that Darren and I talked through. It's based on what we were going to do before, mostly. And I even then I wasn't sure it was going to be released really, like sound, you know, and this is why. So basically the proposal is that we would sort of survey a sampling of schools in a, in, you know, maybe three wards that are representative of, you know, uh, a range of SES, right, and different demographics. So we may, maybe three, one, and seven, say. Um, and we would try to, or we would gather data on the hours or the minutes, you know, our schools putting the required minutes um, or offering um, like, you know, the subjects that we associate with well-rounded education. So art, um, PE, and I don't think we're going to do PE, but art, social studies, science, I think those are the, the chosen subjects. And I just, you know, in talking with principals, not about this, but just about their scheduling and, you know, getting a sense of how this is so complicated in schools. <laughs> I just, first of all, I don't, I'm not confident that we will get um, data that is comparable from school to school. And then also, I'm not sure how meaningful that is, you know, like how many minutes do you put toward it? I guess it's something, but it's not clear to me. Um, it doesn't say anything about quality, right? Or how much it gets disrupted, even if it's on the schedule or I don't know. So I just wanted to hear your thoughts on, does that sound like valid concern or are there reasons we should do it that way? Or are there other ways we might consider doing this? Yeah, Representative Wattenberg. I can't hear you, muted, I think. 
I think it's a super important question. I hear it all the time. I think we all hear it all the time. And it has um, a big, uh, it's an equity issue, it's a quality issue, it's all these issues. So if that's not a good way, I think we need to figure out some ways to do it. For example, um, and by the way, we want, we have been clear that part of the report card we want is something about well-rounded education. So oh. this is an opportunity to pursue that and show what can and can't work. I mean, I think there are questions that can be asked that are, you know, how, how many days a week do your, I mean, I wouldn't talk just to principals, by the way, I would talk to, I'd talk to teachers, maybe I would talk, start with a focus group of teachers to get an idea of how we might ask it. But, you know, you could ask questions, how many days a week do kids at these different grades get social studies or science or the art? What's the typical time that is allotted to it? I think a very important one is to what, you know, to get some sense of, because um, I know I had this with, with my kids, is, um, you know, when students need um, IEP services, what do they get pulled out of? That's what they get pulled out of. Um, I think that's really important to understand. Um, how many days, how many minutes, um, you know, is it, some schools have it departmentalized, some don't. That would be very interesting because when an elementary school departmentalizes, you don't lose the time. Mm -hmm. um, that's where the kids go for that time. If it is departmental, if it's not departmentalized, it's very easy for it to just to be uh, lost, in the, lost in the wash, you know? So yeah. I think there are some great questions that we could ask principals also maybe start with teachers who would help us figure out some ways of framing it. But I think it's super important. I think it's super what important to do. I, I was just questioning the format, not whether to do it or not. But I think your idea of doing maybe follow-up um, interviews and or focus groups is essential then, right? Like, because you get this data, but it, I think that the concern I'm raising is it's not necessarily clear, both because it's self-reported, right? It's going to be a survey, I assume. And also because it just will, just because you know the, the minutes that are spent doesn't mean you know, for instance, th this really important question you raised, Ruth, about like, you know, do students get pulled out, you know, for various services or whatever? And that's something you could maybe find out in interviews. Um, and I think maybe even, yeah. So. The, the one thing I would just um, calibrate a little on what you said is, I think this might be a time where it's better to start with the focus group so that we can get the good questions. I think teachers will have a really good idea of what kinds of questions are likely to get you unclear answers. Whereas if we brainstorm it with them, we could come up with questions that would really provide useful information that would be credible and comparable. I'm just responding to Josh. Yes, um, I'll reach out to you, Josh. I think that would be really helpful um, to brainstorm with you on this. Um, yes, John Paul. So I I uh, I don't want to be the the dark cloud type thing. I just want to be um, sure that that the committee is also fully aware that if we do push this to FY twenty three, the Cal markup today did not provide any additional funding for research. So we would need to understand once we get the F final FY23 budget, what exactly we would spend in all of the things that the committees would be potentially pushing to FY23. So I still think this is a really strong recommendation for this committee to make to do that research. I just want to be like clear that it's not a we're deciding to do this, right? The full board still needs to talk about that once the FY23 budget is, is completed. But I think it's a very strong candidate in my mind. Yeah. I mean, I think we have the same problem if we do it now though, in that it's, it's if we wanna do it well and engage a you know third party vendor, then we don't have the funding for it now either, right? Really. So maybe we'll have better luck. <laughs> push it off and maybe is this something we need to um do some advocacy for is that still possible no it's not right yeah like money can be moved right um uh, so the, the the committee of the whole literally 
like as we were meeting okay. now was finalizing their markup. Yeah. Um, so there is, um, there is still potential for amendments and for changes between the council's first vote, which is in a couple weeks, and then the council's second vote in June for, for changes and for additional funding to be added or withdrawn or all of those things. So yes, there is the potential, but it has to be found. So it would need to be subtracted from somewhere else in the budget in order to make it into ours for, for this type of project or for any other projects yeah. that we have. Um, but we, we did not get any additional funding as we have in, in some of the previous fiscal years for research purposes. No additional meaning we have the same amount we used to like a, we have some is what you're saying. We didn't get additional. Yes, we have our general program funds, which we have devoted to research for some okay. of them for research for a number of things, but that same program funds also can use translations, interpretations, yeah. uh, you know, any of that stuff that we do is all, is all that sort of general program category. Right, right. Got you. Okay, no, thank you. That was not a dark cloud. That was helpful. <laughs> we need to know these things. <laughs> um, otherwise, it's all just pie in the sky. So um, I am looking at the time. We have about 10 minutes. Um, unless there was anything else, any other thoughts or questions about this, I think I am not questioning whether we should do this. I just want to make that clear again. I just, I think I'm not 100% happy with our, our sketched out plan, but, but it needs to be filled out anyway. So I think it would be great to speak with Josh and other folks about how we might do this in a more robust way. Um, okay, so I am going to move to our final topic, which is the update of the assessment and accountability committee page on our website. Um, and Darren has been sort of looking at it and looking at what needs to be, I think we, we stop, it stops at like last, year something. So it does need to be updated. Um, but there was a question I thought was a good one. Um, Darren raised about ways that the, the public might utilize the site. Um, and, you know, when we put out our updates or our newsletters, are there things that we would want to, you know, send them to on the site? So that's something I'm not, you know, if you, I don't know if you've visited our page on our website, but if not, I encourage you to do that. Um, and think about, is there anything in particular you think would be useful for various reasons for the public to access? Um, yes, Representative Wattenberg. So, I think it would be, I mean, right now the highlight is um, wait, hold on. Well, I'll say this, the, we have done a lot of work on this in terms of research and in terms of, um, research resolutions, surveys, and that comes way at the bottom of this and it's not explained. So unless you know what you're looking for, you're not gonna get to it. So I do think that it would be useful to have that more, you know, for the page to be a little more about, um, you know, there is this plan and we're proposing, you know, we've heard a lot of feedback and we're proposing to change it and sort of focus on that and give people the various um, documents, you know, with a one sentence explanation board about what it is so people know what we're doing and why. That's helpful. Thank you. Anything else? Immediate jump hall. Um, so I, I think that is incredibly helpful uh, feedback. I think one of the things to note is that the design of the website doesn't always make it easy for us to make those changes. So the the way that it that the sort of format works is when we're uploading a document, we can you know sort of select which pages it's on, but that sort of list thing is almost always near the bottom of the page in terms of the website design we can still highlight though in text and and i'm very excited by uh 
that we're going to be using the new web page to do some of these revisions and get more interactions with our website rather than it just being more static text. So this, I'm excited about this process. Can I just ask, I mean, I know we just redesigned the website. Um, I mean, it's really, is there a way that we can get some more flexibility? Because that was part of the idea of the redesign was to be able to have it speak a little bit more in the voice of the board. Is there anything we can still do about that? And I, yeah, I realize you all worked on it. We act, I mean, we do actually have lots more flexibility now. I mean, <laughs> uh, Representative Wattenberg, you remember when, when we were uh, struggling with the old website constantly and it took forever to get anything updated. Um, so now we have more, much more direct control over the, the content in terms of the, the text and those types of things. And so we can regularly update that. And I, I'm very excited that this committee is taking this on because I'm hoping that other committees will, will uh, look at this and say, hey, we can change their, their text on our website more often. Let's do that. And maybe, maybe that's one of the things that becomes one of your monthly agenda items on your committees is reviewing new text to, to update every month or something to keep it moving and keep it, keep it fresh. I think that would be fantastic because I do think that a lot of it is pretty dry and sort of bureaucratic because it isn't necessarily in the voice of the board. It's just informational stuff, but I think we could have a much more dynamic text website, um, provided that the board members would be, would be interested in doing that. Yeah. I mean, I, when I look at it, it, it looks boring and I am not drawn to it, right? Like, and I, I think there are parts of our site that are much more alluring, you know? And I'm just wondering, it, like the landing page with the big boxes of things, can we make it look more like that? No, is that possible? Some, some of those things are possible on, on the internal pages, some are not. Okay. Um, and that's the, that's the, this is, because we still have to follow Octo's guidelines, some of those things are available and some are not. So I don't know that like we would be able to have like a, the big box things. We might be able to have a carousel like we had on our old page where things kind of cycle through at the beginning of the page. Um, I'm not sure on some of those technical elements, we'd have to loop in Malayo and, and Caitlin who are the, the gurus of, of that type of, of work, but we can, I mean, if you can think it up, we will ask. Can we have them at our next meeting? and maybe talk about this, like what is and isn't possible if we had sure. ideas. Or there may even be a guide. And if there is, then I can, um, we can provide the guide directly to you and, and you can look and see what are some of the do's and don'ts that we have to follow. Okay. Yeah, that would be helpful um, in thinking about this because, you know, we, we can make suggestions all day, but it's kind of a waste of time if there's nothing we can do. One really simple thing, and sorry if I'm repeating what you said, Representative Wattenberg, but I think reversing the order of everything so that it's the most recent to the oldest versus what it is now, which is oldest to, yeah. So I think that would be good. Did you wanna add anything, Darren? Or did I miss anything? Um, nothing at the moment, um, but I, I will say just it, it would be, I, I'm making a note of this for like uh, an action item coming up, um, but I, I think this, I think the only thing I could add to this is how helpful it would be to accompany those informational emails with just a link with all these resources, but just make it very public friendly. Yeah. Okay, and I think even, I mean, I don't know if we are allowed to, or if it's easy to add icons and, you know, images, it just makes it friendlier, you know, um, and especially for folks who may not be uh, English dominant or whatever, you know, icons that are expletive, you know, that, not, that's the wrong word, illustrative of what they're looking for. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's weird. Anyway, like an explanation, you know. <laughs> so anything else on that? I think we're going to end on time. All right, great. Um, any, <laughs> don't tell anyone, Josh, all right? <laughs> that stays here. Um, in the recording, of course. 
Um, so next steps, I, I know we've named some throughout this meeting. Is there anything we didn't talk about that members would like to put on the agenda for next month or that we should talk about in between? Um, oh. Once members are done, then staff can talk. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> um, it would be interesting to hear any information related to our statewide testing um, and updates related to like how the information was used. Um, I think President Sutter provided really good comments yesterday related to you know, the purpose of the testing and how it'll be used. Um, I know a lot of um, schools are getting ready for assessments. Um, so just kind of, I don't really have like a, um, like a specific point, but it'll just be interesting to see. Well, next month will be May. So um, we'll probably have more information about how schools felt. Um, and then also we can relate that to, you know, any of our accountability work, um, so. I think that's a great idea. Just <laughs> FYI, Frankie is taking it for the first time. So, um, oh, I know. My condolences. I know. She's like, what? I can. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I mean, the practice part again, they're just practicing for weeks. Anyway, uh, go ahead, Representative Wattenberg. So, um, oh my goodness. Well, um, sorry. No, I totally forgot what I was going to say. Um, All right. While you're thinking, go ahead, John Paul. Um, I was just going to say, uh, ask uh, when the committee is going to finalize a work plan that I can send to the board. Oh, it's not finalized. I mean, I just want to make sure because we, when we were talking about the the well-rounded education piece, it made me wonder if it's a if, oh. it's, if, the, if if we're done now and the proposal is what it is, or are we? I am sorry. So I thought that it that the work plan is done, but that we do have wiggle room within the work plan to change things around as needed. I mean, yes. we're not locked in, right? Yeah. If if it doesn't make sense. So what I would what I thought is that it was finalized with the option to change the date on some things. I think that's generally true. I just wanted to make sure. So in I think it was uh, Vice President uh, Thompson's email. She asked committees to provide ranges for do for dollar figures and a couple other items. And so I just wanted to make sure that that was we did. part of it. I mean, to be fair, I haven't looked at all of it. I just wanted to make sure that we were all clear on that we are, this committee is done. I think so. Does anybody think differently on that? <laughs> this may be relevant to that. I remember my question, which is this, which is we talked about the research on the WRE and the um, sort of the focus with that piece of it, which had been scheduled for next budget year. But one of the things we've talked about a lot, and I hope this is in the budget, I don't know, is that we're going to try to do a regular annual survey of either teachers or parents um, as we went forward. And if we're doing that this budget year, because I think we are funded for this budget year, that some of these questions. Um, about the effect of the tests and are you, you know, what that's all can be in there. You know, the the testing issues that um, Representative Reed raised and also some of these issues regarding well-rounded education. So we but should that, sure get those in. That survey does not sit in this committee, right? That's like a SBOE, whole SBOE um, annual survey, right, Ruth? Cor correct. I'm just clarifying. Okay, so it doesn't yeah, have to yeah, be yeah. work plan. Go ahead, John Paul. I'm sorry. Well, but it might be that we need to um, make recommendations to the board. But John Paul can uh, answer. Yeah, no, I I just wanted to to provide that same clarification that it isn't that is not one of the committee's things, but it is part of the larger conversation that the board will need to decide. Um, and you know that's one of the things that's a fairly large project. So if we do that. Um, a lot of the other projects then would not be uh, able to be funded for the for this year. So I just wanted to be cautious about thinking that we're going to be able to go ahead with that larger survey um, based on some of the comments that, that I heard from the working session. But I mean, it's the board's decision on what we move forward with. So when are we when do we 
decide that? The May working session. The May working session? Okay. Darren, sorry to keep you waiting. I just wanted to share um, that our um, great fellow put together a chart of all the um, AERA um, sessions that are going on. There's an annual conference going on. Um, I listed out a bunch of sessions specific to assessment and accountability. I'm going to drop the link in just a moment. Yeah, thanks for the reminder. I forgot about that. Um, yeah, I just wanted to throw my, a reminder in there. I plan on going to a few, but if there are specific ones that you would either like me to attend, um, if, if it's not virtual, at least noting the working papers and just reaching out, getting the any materials, papers, or reaching out to the authors themselves and just finding out more information. Yeah. So I just wanted to drop that in the chat. Um, and I do plan on just attending as many as I can, but um, right. if there are specific ones, then I could mark it down in this form. Okay. Maybe, uh, rep I mean, um, President Sutter, if you do another to do to the board, this can be part of it. it totally fell off my radar. And I, I, I don't know, there's been a lot, <laughs> as always. So yeah, but Giselle did a great job putting this together. And so I, there there's different ones for different committees as well yeah so if you do sit in on a different committee um like uh the um advocacy and outreach board governance education standards teacher practice there's even a few for sac that i'm going to sit on but please just share out um what you'd like to for us to sit on thank you um i want to be mindful of time um so unless there's any other burning is that an old hand ruth or a new one no that's old sorry president sutter yeah thank you so um i want to second darren's comments on giselle's chart i sent my feedback in and there's a lot of really good sessions including a lot uh that are relevant to your committee so worth taking a look and sending some requests but um i wanted to just follow up on what john paul shared about the uh, the working session discussion on the budget. So there's been no final decisions made because at the end of the February working uh, session, April working session, where are we? April working session, we discussed that we were coming together again in May and discussing it again at the, at the May working session. So we haven't made any final decisions, but one of the realities is that if committees can give us the smallest possible numbers for some of the specific research work they want to do, then we have more money to think about the kind of survey that Representative Wattenberg is mentioning. Mm. If there are individual pieces of research that don't seem to fit well with that, which I know was something Representative Chang raised um, around the literacy research work, but that may not be well suited for the same kind of survey, um, that, that then we'll have to discuss that as a board, just like do we, do we want to prioritize a board-wide survey that covers multiple topics over individual research projects that may be more customized to a particular audience or a particular topic? Um, I don't know the answer that board members will have to that, but I think that's worth discussing as a set of colleagues. Okay, thank you for that clarification because I think I missed that when um, John Paul, you were saying we should have a range. We don't have that. And I don't know how to do that. So I guess I'll have a conversation with you and or Darren about what that range might look like. Yeah, uh, Representative Wattenberg. Yeah, so I, I wonder if one thing that would be useful is as, as we approach the May session and you're gonna put out something about what are we gonna do with our budget priorities, that a question be, you know, what are some specific questions that you would like to get answered? Um, either for your committee or, or more broadly and see what comes up and whether it ends up making sense. For example, I mean, for Alistair, I think it would be uh, super interesting for him and for all of us to know whether we ask parents or we ask teachers, you know, how long does it take to get um, a screening? How long does it take to get an IEP? How long does it, you know, um, et cetera. I think I could think of a whole bunch of questions that he would get really good info on. So, and there might be other things like that. No, I, yeah. 
I totally respect that, Representative Wattenberg. And I think if we decide that this board-wide survey is worth going forward with financially, that that is exactly how we should approach it, as making sure that every committee has the chance to put some questions in. What I'm getting at is the, the prior question, which is, is a board-wide survey something we invest funding in if it means a trade-off between specific right. kinds of work that can't be tackled in that survey that a committee may want to do? No, no, I agree. I'm just suggesting, and I can do this on my own, actually, just sort of collecting, getting people to think about what we could get from a survey so that when we're, when we're comparing, we know we have an idea of what we're comparing. That's all. Yep. No, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, okay, and I will just throw out there um, that there is another research project on our working plan because we were planning to do one this fiscal year and one next fiscal year. But oh no, no, never mind. It doesn't require funding. The other one, but it is looking into research on um, park because that was you know a push from some of our members. Um, so that's just something we may want to. To um, Dr. Reed's point, maybe that will be part of our discussion when we talk about, you know, what we're hearing from, or what the takeaways are from this year's testing. Um, anything else? Okay, yay! So we're not too badly over time. Um, thank you all for taking time to be here, and thank you to Josh Boots for joining us tonight, and anyone else who's out there. Um, and I hope you have a great evening. Take care. Bye.